Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to our channel. If you're new here and enjoy our content, feel free to subscribe to our channel and click the little bell, that way you never miss a notification. It's been a minute since we uploaded. I think at one point we said we weren't going to come back to YouTube and then we just decided, you know what, screw it, we're going to come back to YouTube and now that we're in a more stable environment, um, we're going to start filming again and working on our YouTube channel. Uh, so, I've had something on my mind lately and it's been on the topic of why people claim they want DID and honestly why they shouldn't be claiming such things. We've had a lot going on lately um, and at some point we're gonna do a little system update and let everybody know what's happening uh, but it's been on our mind a lot of like you know people thinking oh DID is a really cool disorder I want DID. No you don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there's been so much going on and we've decided to try and start documenting everything. Um, we wrote down a whole list here. Okay, I have a list. So if you see me, like, looking away, that's what I'm looking at. So, the first reason why you don't want DID is the fact that there's so much stigma around this disorder. There is so much stigma you are automatically feared and labeled the moment you come out as having DID. So, with all the stigma, there's a lot of misinformation online about DID. And so, for an example, if you come out as having DID to your friends or family and they start looking it up, they could come across a lot of stigmatizing information that just isn't true and stick that to you, basically, because you came out as having DID and they just decided to go look it up on Google. There's so much misinformation, and honestly, the best way to learn about DID is learn through people who have it. So, with all the misinformation again, um, you will find that some professionals don't believe you. There are literally psychiatrists and therapists out there who do not believe in the existence of DID, even though it's literally in their DSM-5. So, if you go and try to get help, most likely, honestly, from our experience here, you're not going to get it right away. It will take years. This is why people state that, that people with DID are in the mental health care system for like seven years, if not more, before they're actually diagnosed. And literally from our experience, that is true. It is sad, but it is true. So because a lot of uh, mental health care professionals don't believe in DID, um, when you go and try and get help, you're most likely going to be misdiagnosed. You may be misdiagnosed um, with schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder, like any of those, um, borderline personality disorder. Uh, there's all kinds of things that usually get misinterpreted when it comes to, you know, trying to diagnose DID. Um, and so with a misdiagnosis, for example, you may be placed on medications that you don't need. Uh, because you don't have schizophrenia or you don't have bipolar, but yet they want you to take all these medications for those disorders to try and um, reduce the symptomology. And you're taking those medications and they're not good for you. They're very, very bad. It's very bad to take medication for things that you don't have. So, another thing. It's hard to make friends and it's even harder to keep them. We know this from experience. Um... Our partner system I had a falling out recently with a friend uh, it's also an ex friend of ours um, and seeing them go through that was rough you know us going through the same thing prior to them going through that was also rough it's really hard to make friends because so many parts of you don't know who to trust it's hard to trust people when you've been through trauma and then, of course, because some parts don't trust your friends, those parts are probably going to cause issues with your friends. And that's what happens. I mean, and that's why it's hard to keep friends. It's hard to keep anybody around when they're not you because they don't understand because they're not in your shoes. They don't know what you go through. So, yeah, it's really hard to trust people. It's hard knowing who's safe and who's not safe. And even when you... 
you know, you think you know someone's safe, but turns out they're not. People um, use kindness as a, as a thing to take advantage of people sometimes. Not all the time, sometimes. Um, and it's really hard as a trauma survivor to know, you know, like, oh, someone's being nice to me, so they must be a good person. It's not always the case. Sometimes they're just using you. Sometimes they're trying to get close to you. They're trying to make you trust them so that in the end, they can tear you down and they can hurt you. And that just repeats the cycle of betrayal and abuse, more trauma, more lack of trust, more problems that's going to take you a long time to get past, to get over, to get through. Um, all of that stuff takes a lot of time in therapy, and that's another thing I'm going to get to. Um, but when someone breaks your trust and betrays you, it's really hard to get past that, especially when you have DID, because then you have parts that are going to hold on to that anger and that pain, and it's, it's going to stay with them for a long time. You may get past it. But other parts inside you have not. And that's very, very hard to deal with. So obviously another reason that you don't want DID is the fact that DID is created through childhood trauma. There is no other way to create DID. Okay, so obviously that means that you would have had to go through some severe childhood trauma, repeated abuse. And it could be anything. It could be emotional abuse, verbal abuse, neglect, um... Sexual abuse, physical abuse, in our case it was ritual abuse, which basically incorporates every single one of those things into the same thing. Um, trauma creates DID. So in order to have DID, you have to go through trauma. You can't just want DID and not have the trauma. It's not how it works. And if you don't want childhood trauma, you don't want DID. Trust me. Um, a few of the reasons why you don't want DID is the dissociation and the amnesia that come with it. So with dissociation, you can feel like you don't exist. You can feel physically numb. You can feel emotionally numb. Hours upon hours can go by and you may feel like it's only been a few minutes. You could just be sitting there and staring at a couch or staring at the wall and you're just like, where am I? What am I doing? And this can go on for hours, it can go on for days, it can go on for weeks. It can get really bad with dissociation. And even the dissociation can come out of nowhere. The amnesia, that can happen in between switches, like when an altar is taken over. And you have no idea what that altar has done or said. That's a little scary sometimes. Especially when you're waking up in places that you don't know how you got there. You don't even know where you are. We've been in therapy, I think, two years now with, the, with a therapist that is actually right for us. Keep that in mind. Okay, we've technically been in of about years, almost. Well, wait, there we go. And five of those years were with therapists that were not right for us, that did not believe us, that were misdiagnosing us, um, that couldn't work with us even if they did believe us. They didn't have the qualifications to work with us. Um... And we're finally with a therapist right now that is, has been able to help us, and she's done fantastic. And it's only been two years that we've seen her, and we've made a lot of progress. Like, I'm not going to downsize um, how much we've done in therapy, but I also know that it's just the start um, for us. And it's already been two years. Two. And we have so much more to work on, so much more to work through. I'm going to backtrack just a little bit and go back to the um, the one that I was talking about where it's, it's hard to make friends and it's hard to keep them. There was another thing I forgot to add to that. So basically, when you're friends with someone, um, if your whole system is friends with them, um, then it's not just you that's affected by um, that friend's departure if you and that friend aren't friends anymore. There's other parts of you that are severely affected that also lost a friend. Um, someone that they trusted. They lost that person too. Those altars are hurting too. And it, it's not just you and it's not just the friend. It's, it's literally you and every part of you um, that's hurting right now because of that. And that's rough. 
That is not easy to deal with. It took us literally months. I can't even tell you how many months it took us to get past one friendship that ended. Um, but yeah, back on the therapy thing, it's really hard to find the right therapist. Um, and that's like with anything, really. Um, sometimes you just get with a therapist and you don't click with them. Um, but when it comes to DID and like a very controversial and very misunderstood disorder, it's even harder to find the right therapist that suits you and that suits everyone. So it takes years of therapy to even begin healing when you have DID. And uh, not all of your alters may want to cooperate or even participate in therapy. That can make the healing process difficult. And basically that means, yeah, that's why it takes years of therapy to actually start healing. And like we said before, we've been in therapy for two years with a therapist who actually works with us and has been helping us way better than any other therapist we've ever had. We've seen her for two years now and we're just, you know, finally feel like we're at a point where we're actually ready to start opening ourselves up to allowing um, memories to be shared or trauma to be shared. So that we know what happened to us. Like all of it. Not just bits and pieces. Another thing. You don't always get along with your alters. It's not one big happy family. There are points where they get mad at you. They may not want to communicate with you. They may want nothing to do with you. They may be angry. They may be um, resentful towards you. They may want um, to lash out at you. Um, and this can result in suicide attempts. This can result in self-harm. Um... Things that you may not even be doing to yourself, and it, it may be your alters that are doing it to you, and the amnesia that kicks in with that, it's terrifying. It's not fun. You don't want it. Um, we had to deal with uh, a very self-aggressive alter for about, I think it went on, it was 2014, 2016, up until I think 2018, we dealt with him. No, it was, it was more than that, and I'm thinking about it, hold up. Um... We haven't dealt with him for two years, and it's 2022. So up until 2020, we dealt with a very aggressive alter. An alter who hated the host, hated us so much that he was um, fully believed in the fact that he could, you know, terminate or kill the body, and he would still live. It was that bad. Um, we have scars from his uh, suicide attempts, from his self-harm. Um, that in itself was traumatizing for us. So, no, it's not one big happy family. They don't always get along with each other. They don't always get along with you. Um, that's not easy to live with. That, that makes things so hard. When you're just trying to function, you're just trying to heal, and you're just trying to get better. It's not easy. Another thing that you gotta deal with when you have DID is the fact of the stuff that comes with trauma, the PTSD, the flashbacks, the emotional ones, the visual flashbacks, the tactile or body memory flashbacks, um, the nightmares, the night terrors, the panic attacks, the anxiety, the depression. There is so much that comes with DID. Okay, it's not just your alters. It's the trauma. And the trauma has a lot of stuff that comes with it and it's basically everything that I just listed and probably more than that. And so you're having flashbacks on a daily basis and you're having nightmares and night terrors on a nightly basis. It is exhausting. It is so hard to keep going when that's all you deal with. And when you don't know that you have DID and you start experiencing some of the symptoms of it, so like hearing voices inside your head, um, and even seeing them externally, like you could be looking ahead of you and be seeing an altar, uh, that could be a form of co-consciousness. Um, and if you don't know that you have DID, let me tell you, that is, um, terrifying. Uh, there was a point when we were in high school and we didn't, like, know that we had DID. Um, the altars, like, the altars apart from myself, they knew about the DID, they understood it. I did not. So when I started becoming co-conscious with some of them, 
and I had split off a factive of one of my art teachers, and I saw a double art teacher. Let me tell you, that was, um, it made me think I was going crazy. It made me think I was losing my mind, and I was having blackouts, and people were telling me I was acting differently, even calling me different names. It freaked me out. That all happened, like, right before I became aware of my system. And up until that point, there was the dissociation, the black um, the amnesia, the blackouts, uh, the time loss. Uh, not remembering a lot of my childhood, like years upon years worth of my childhood. No memory whatsoever. It was rough. Okay. These are all reasons why you don't want the ID. Another one is the comorbid disorders, such as PTSD. Um, you could have other things with your DID. You can have borderline personality disorder and DID. Um, you can have autism and DID. Uh, you can have a lot of things with your DID. So, another thing. Headaches and migraines from switching. Those are exhausting. Especially when medication doesn't work to fix it. Um, being front stuck is exhausting. Like, on a mental and physical level, exhausting. Um, sometimes you may have little to no communication with your alters, and this can just make every single thing confusing and difficult. Um, it makes it very hard to function. Um, some of your alters may be scary. They may look scary, they may act scary. Um, and this is because of trauma, the stuff that you endured in your childhood. And it can make it very difficult for you to want to open up to them, to want to talk to them. You may be scared of them, and literally you're just like, nope. Not going near that box. So another thing, you're labeled as a monster and you're misunderstood. The sad truth is you're a victim, you're a survivor, you're not a monster. But you're abusers and anybody that you open up to because there's so much stigma with DID, they may not even understand it and so they're immediately going to recoil and be like, oh, well, are you going to kill me? Are you going to hurt me? Who's the bad one? Who's the evil one? Who's the murderer inside you? Yeah. Those are the kinds of questions that you can get sometimes. So, it's not easy living with this disorder. Especially when you're labeled as a horrible thing when, when you're not. People did horrible things to you. And you're labeled as a horrible person for it. So, the last thing that I'm going to talk about on here and... Um, I'm basically just going to be sharing some of our experiences with this because we are um, survivors of ritual abuse. When it comes to ritual abuse in DID, basically there is programming involved. Abusers may attempt to access you. Um, and with the programs, any of your alters can have programming. They could be triggered front and they may feel like they have no choice but to act out the programs, but to do what they're told to do as they think they're supposed to do. And some of the things that they're supposed to do or they think they're supposed to do may not be a good things. This could result in more um, serious risk of suicide, of self-harm um, because of programming. And that is not the person's fault. It's not the altar's fault. It's literally because of the abuse and the trauma that was endured in childhood. Another thing with ritual abuse, Holidays are horrible sometimes. And even some of the days of the year may not even be a holiday holiday for, like, you know, the United States or the UK or whatever. Um, it literally could be a ritualized holiday. And so there may be a time of the year, every single year, that you're seriously struggling and you're having horrendous flashbacks and horrendous anxiety and panic attacks and nightmares and night terrors. And that can go on maybe for a whole week. Once every single year and you may not even understand it for years for years and then you finally do and even then it still doesn't make it any easier to deal with to live with so that's exhausting you don't want to live like that 